traveling through time specially refers to going back to the past. Can we go back to our past? What if we are really able to go back to our past? We can change the history. But is it really possible? Grandfather Paradox says what if the scientists built the time machine and sent you back to the past? Then you killed your grandfather before he met your grandmother. In that way your father was never born. If your father was never born, you were also not born. Then who is the one who went to the past and killed your grandfather? Traveling back through time is against the laws of causality in physics that says things cannot happen before the cause. Or say there can't be effect before it's caused. But some scientists say paradoxes are oddities not impossibilities. Many theories have been developed which solve the problem of the paradoxes. One of them is many world theory. Many words theory has solved all questions of grandfather paradox. This theory advocates the existence of the parallel universes. So if you go back to the past that is not the universe you are living. That is another universe parallel to this universe. It means you can kill your grandfather there but that does not affect your present. Another popular paradox is something called bootstraps paradox. Suppose you go back in time and teach the young Einstein the theory of relativity. After that you come back, if we ask, who postulated theory of relativity, what will be the correct answer? We cannot say that it is by Einstein, since you taught him, and we also cannot say it is by you, since you learn it from Einstein. This will again create a loop, while the idea seems to have no point of origin. We can resolve this paradox from theory of relativity itself. In terms of space-time. An object or an idea that is sent back in time to create the said paradox, can be said to be on a loop in space-time. And Einstein's equations do not forbid these loops to form in space-time. Assume time as the track of trains. Once train goes ahead, it is not turning back. Neither is it stopping on its way. Let us integrate this fact with time travel. It sounds that it is not possible to go back to our past. But what if we link the track of trains with the previous tracks? If it is so, isn't it possible that we can reach out past? Time is like a river which is flowing in one direction. Isn't it possible to swim back if we manage energy and wait to swim backward? Scientists take time as fourth dimension after length, width and height. Currently we are traveling in one direction with the speed of 60 seconds per minute. So majority of physicists believe that one-way time travel is more possible and that is to the future. Einstein's special theory of relativity says, if a mass was accelerated near the speed of light, the time for the mass will slow down on the Earth. This is called time dilation and then it opens the probability of traveling to the future. Traveling to the future means traveling with the speed of light. But nothing can travel faster than light. However, we should not necessarily travel faster than light to reach the future. We should travel near the speed of light. But for that, we need a huge amount of energy and very advanced ship which can orbit the Earth about seven times in a second. In fact, this type of time travel has been already done. Russian cosmonaut Krakulev has been locked more than 803 days in orbit traveling 17,000 miles in an hour. When he came back he was 53 seconds slower. There is another example you experience time dilation every day. In order for your car's GPS navigation to function as accurately as it does, satellites have to take relativistic effects into account. This is because even though satellites are not moving at anything close to the speed of light, they are still going pretty fast. The satellites are also sending signals to ground stations on the Earth. 
These stations and the GPS unit in your car are all experiencing higher accelerations due to gravity than satellites in orbit. To get that pinpoint accuracy, the satellites use clocks that are accurate to a few billionths of seconds. Since each satellite is 12,600 miles above the Earth and moves at about 6,000 miles per hour, there is a relativistic time dilation to that ticks on about 4 microseconds each day. Add the effects of gravity and the figure goes up to about 7 microseconds. That's 7,000 nanoseconds. The difference is very real, if no relativistic effects were accounted for. A GPS unit that tells you it's a half mile to the next gas station would be 5 miles off after only one day. Time passes slower in space where there is high gravitational force than in space where the gravitational force is low. This can be illustrated by pendulum time period experiment. When gravity is less, time period is more and time elapses faster. Dot for a single time period, more actual time passes out. When there is more gravity, the time period is short and time elapses slower. In this case, in a single time period, less actual time elapses. The relation between gravity and time period of a pendulum is given by the mathematical expression t equals 2 pi l slash g. Simply a pendulum with the magnetic metal ball can be taken and it can be oscillated by disturbing it in absence of external magnetic field. We can record the time period in normal conditions. Next time, we can place a long bar magnet to attract the metal ball vertically downward to add the effect by gravity. In this way, we apparently create more gravity for the pendulum. In this case, too, we record the time period of oscillation by stopwatch. We can find that in the latter case, the time period is less. This can prove gravitational time dilation. Another idea of time travel is typolar cylinder. You would take matter that is about 10 times the sun's mass, and then roll it into very long and super dense cylinder. After spinning this up a few billion revolutions per minute, any spaceship nearby following a very precise spiral around this cylinder could get itself on a closed time-like curve from where the journey to the past will begin. Black hole can be the means to reach the future. It is something like a natural time machine. The conventional intuition of black hole sets our mind that nothing getting inside the black hole ever happens to get out of it. It can be illustrated by vacuum cleaner which takes in everything forcefully and lets nothing escape out of it. It is blind sack model of a black hole. Black hole can be the means to reach the future. According to general theory of relativity due to strong gravity, time passes so quickly near the black hole. That means if time travelers orbited the black hole, they will reach in future world. But black hole is very far from us. However it's possible to create that condition artificially. General theory of relativity predicts the existence of wormholes. Wormholes are believed to be the shortcut to the time. It means if we enter through the wormhole, we will reach to the past and even future. But wormholes are so small that we can't even see them with our naked eyes. How can we enter there? It is possible to catch one of the wormholes and enlarge it to enter a human body inside. For that we should have very advanced technology. We can take an example of a soccer ball. Two exactly opposite points, let's say two ends of a diameter, are too close when it is round. If we cut the soccer ball and spread it, two points are very far than they were. In case of the small ball, this doesn't make much difference but we account for millions of light years. This makes a large difference. There is another theory that makes time travel possible. That is cosmic stream. Cosmic strings are either infinite or they are in loops, 
with no ends. They are believed to have formed billions of years ago, moments after the Big Bang. The approach of two such strings parallel to each other will bend space-time making time travel possible. Time travel is possible at least theoretically. If someday someone knocks your door and says that he is your descendant from the future, then don't be surprised. <laughs>